Week 12, crossover Thursday with Travis Rogers from Locked on Rams. Here we go. You are Locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Week 12, crossover Thursday. Once again, Travis Rogers locked on Rams. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals, linking up with two teams with unknown futures. But I think that the Cardinals may have the leg up in the unknownness and opportunity <laughs> over the aging Los Angeles Rams. Yes. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Rams your respective first listen each and every day, free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm about to go get fat and happy. Um, and I'm happy, though, because I'm around Travis Rogers from Locked on Rams. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars, four and six Rams, two and a hundred Cardinals <laughs> matching up at State Farm Stadium, a place where the Cardinals haven't really fared so well in the Sean McVay era. Um, first things first, an Arizona Cardinals killer who will be on the field is Aaron Donald. One who yeah. may not be at the time of this recording is Cooper Cup. Travis, talk to me just real quick out the gate because it is one of the biggest storylines as you – you know, witness a potential playoff push in Los Angeles. Where are we sitting with Cooper Cup and his availability for Sunday? Yeah, I think Cup is, is honestly kind of the story of the year, Alex, that <laughs> Cooper Cup was not here for the first four games of the season. He was on IR. He really didn't participate in any sort of preseason camp or, or training camp or anything like that. He missed the, the basically the last like third plus or so of the season last year. And he came back finally and had a couple of decent games. And then had a bunch of bad games and, and really has not looked like the guy that you saw. It's been probably since early last season. And if we're being even more honest about it, probably when he won the Super Bowl MVP uh, at, at the end of the 2021 season, where he's looked like himself, he just really has not been a high impact guy. Um, injury is a part of it. Rhythm is a part of it, to be sure. I think he's going to try to give it a go on Sunday against the Cards because I think they need him. I think they'd have to have him if they're going to try to win this game. This is, the, you know, quite frankly, this is their season. If they win this game, they're in it. If they don't, they're not. It, it, it really is that easy for them. And to win it without Cooper Cup is much more complicated. So I expect him to go, but how good he'll be, that that's the, that's the great question because for the last month or so, he has not been very good. Yeah, I mean, hobbled with injury. You know, he had the calf, and then he had the the ham. You know, whatever the setbacks, everything in August, and yeah. you know, he had a couple of really good games. One of which was against the Cardinals earlier this yep. season. Kyron Williams designated to return, and he's in line to I play right coming off the IR. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing that that has me most excited because the Rams' offense has really been kind of easy to figure out. When Matthew Stafford is good, they got a shot. When he's not, they lose. It, it, it really is that easy, and. Like you mentioned, Kyron Williams against the Cardinals earlier this year was kind of his coming out party. He had a yeah. really big day, uh, I, you know, starting that second half where they just kept pounding him the ball and, and giving it to him over and over and over again. Uh, he ends up getting hurt. We haven't really seen him since then. So this is his first time to, to chance to come back. Um, Cup and Nakua plus a healthy Stafford and a functional Kyron Williams, I think gives, gives them a really good chance. But if, if, if anything happens to Stafford, it's all a wrap. There's there's nothing good beyond that. Yeah, and excuse my my camera issues for those watching on YouTube right now. It's it's interesting with with these guys that you know, on paper the offense doesn't look like. I mean, with so much bad football being played this year, it yeah. doesn't look like this offense would be near the you know the bottom or the doldrums of the NFL with. You know, on paper with Puka, who had played well earlier in the season, as you mentioned, and Kyron mm -hmm. Williams and the offensive line isn't what it used to be, but it's not the worst in the league. Like, you're looking for average this year on offense, and you're looking to make a couple plays, balls to bounce your way, and you're in games. There are 16 teams between four and six wins through 11 weeks. Like, that's right. bonkers. I'm an idiot. I thought there was no middle class in the NFL yeah. anymore. I think Nothing this is much. kind of like a, a lot of bad teams maybe winning a couple more games because the good teams – aren't playing as well as they should. 
like with and the Rams are a perfect example. Like now that they're healthiest, I mean the defense isn't what it used to be either. But pivoting to the Cardinals, you see Aaron Donald on the other side wearing 99. You see the interior of the offensive line playing, playing poorly, like the interior of the offensive line for the Cardinals has so far this year. DJ Humphreys at left tackle not playing well. Aaron Donald likes to blow up the middle, and that's something that seems to be a recipe for failure for the Cardinals and has been since Sean McVay came over and says Aaron Donald has worn a Rams jersey. Now with Kyler Murray coming back, he's played fine. In the last couple of weeks, you know, there's been some rust. He's had some Kyler Murray moments, one of which was the scramble where he ran for 68 yards when it was only a third and 10 to elongate that, to elongate that drive, Trey McBride, 33-yard catch, and then a Matt Prater kick to beat Atlanta. And then he had the, you know, the 50-yard the bomb to Rondell Moore to start last week against Houston. The defense, um, you know, blanked Houston's offense, which is one of the best in football. Yep. Uh, in the second half, they turned CJ Stroud over three times, and the Cardinals put, couldn't put up any damn points. Now, let me ask you this: From we talked about Kyler for the last couple seasons, let me ask you about this because going back to I think it was Week Three of 2021 when Kyler Murray ran rough shot at SoFi Stadium yep. over a healthy uh, Los Angeles Rams team, and you and I talked the next time they played that year, like Kyler embarrassed this defense. Yep. So there was that, but we've seen a lot more of the antithesis of that against the Rams since Kyler Murray's come in. How much, and this is an existential crisis I've been dealing with. How much of a leash do you give Kyler Murray 11 months removed from an ACL tear? Is it like you're good enough to be able to not make as many mistakes as an average quarterback? Or is it like, you know what, take the rest of the year. It's a new offense and just, you know, mosey on into 2024 when the expectations start. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because, you know, they just paid him, right? They, they pay him at the beginning of last season. So they're mm-hmm. kind of committed to him for a while. And, and it's not like you're going to move on. You know, I, I never say never, but it feels like he's the quarterback, at least of the present and of the near future. Um, I, 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 I'm a big believer. If you're going to be bad, be bad. Right. Like if, if you're if you're going to not be in the mix, don't be in the mix. So I, I wouldn't play him if I if I were a, a cardinal person, I would be looking to, you know, maybe make sure he's fully healthy or maybe try to collect some draft picks to give him some help. I don't you know, you, you could speak to this better than I could. But whether it's O-line help, whether it's more weapons, maybe it's a defense that can keep other people out of the end zone. But he's he's one of those guys that as, as an outsider who went, you know, playing him twice a year. If you can get ahead of the Cardinals, they're not scary at all. But if you're chasing them, it's a very different dynamic because he is a playmaker, because he is he is able to do a lot of things. But if I know he's got to throw the ball, he's not he's he's not scary. And because that's when Aaron Donald goes and gets him. And that's, you know, Byron Young has had a pretty good year as getting to the quarterback. So if the Rams can play with a lead. Kyler Murray doesn't really freak me out all that much, but if the if the cards can get out in front and the Rams have not played in front very often this season, I think it's a totally different game. Yeah, and you know, Kyler's had his comebacks over the years. I mean, namely last year against the Rams, putting them on their shoulder in the second half and winning in overtime. Another mm-hmm. iconic, you know, uh, minute and a half, two-point conversion play where he was running around like a crazy person. I think that that may shift – um, once, you know, with Jonathan Gannon, with this offense, it's more of a big boy offense where you don't just throw the rule book out when you go down three, nothing, because you don't have any way to adjust like right. we've you know, experienced with Cliff Kingsbury over the last handful of seasons, but it, it, it goes to a point and listen, I want to ask you this because, uh, for those who don't know, Travis is, you know, daily radio, um, in LA and has been for a long time. Um, and me coming from radio also like it's our job to find original content, but content that is still rooted in reality. Okay, so my struggle with this and we'll talk about this matchup and we'll talk about the path to victory as we roll on here. Um, I'm in the camp that if the Cardinals are drafting the top three or four where Marvin Harrison Jr. is in reach, that it would be irresponsible of the Cardinals to take him when they have so many needs elsewhere. Mm. And I understand that he could be a transcendent talent. Okay, I also understand the drafting wide receivers early does not equate to winning Super Bowls. Right. It just it hasn't been. And I know you can make a stat for anything. I get all of that. Am I crazy with Marvin Harrison Jr.? I mean, you've you, he's in the he's in the same storylines. All of them is Caleb Williams, who you've you know you see very uh, intimately in, in LA. Yep. Like, would it be a mistake for the Cardinals to pass on Marvin Harrison Jr. given all the needs they have elsewhere? 
or am I not as crazy as I think I am at times? Well, I, I get it. So the way I look at it, Alex, is it's always been I'm going to take the best player that's on the board. Okay. And, and, and whether I, I I have other needs, that's fine. But if Marvin Harrison, if, if their evaluations are saying he's the best player that's left that hasn't gotten picked yet, take him. Yeah. And you you know you you can figure it out from there because when you when you're we, we've seen the Rams do this the last couple of years where they've drafted for need necessarily right they took logan bruss in the second round out of wisconsin they cut him the very next year they you know they took him in the second round with their their first pick but they cut him he's on their practice squad right now we saw them decide that they they liked tutu atwell's speed a couple of years before that well he's caught like 10 passes in his nfl career he's 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 nowhere and creed humphrey which who was the best next player on the board he's been the center of the kansas city chiefs since he's gotten there and he's the guy that's responsible, at least in large part, for protecting Patrick Mahomes. Take the best football players and figure it out from there. I think that's how they got Todd Gurley. It's how they got Aaron Donald. It's how they got some of these guys. Like, who's the best? Aaron Donald is a little small. Fine. Who cares? He's awesome. Take him anyway. And 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 I think that's what they did to get to where they were, to where they were competing for Super Bowls. And then they, they you know, they, the Rams went about it totally differently. They they supplemented their team with NFL players. They didn't do it through the draft. They give yeah. me Whippers, give me Sullivan, give me Ramsey, give me Fowler. Like they just OBJ, Von Miller. They just kept taking NFL guys to fill their holes. And now they're trying to pay the visa down, right? That they spent so much on that credit card over the last few years that the bill went through the roof. That's what happened last year. That's what's happening this year. But I think next year they're going to have a chance and, you know, not to get too far afield here, but when they beat Seattle last week, it was kind of one of those, uh oh, moments for me. I, I I think the Rams are on their very best day, average, and they don't have very many very best days. This is a team that has a lot of a lot of holes to fill, and I you know picking fifth is better than picking tenth. Picking tenth is better than picking fifteenth, and now they're picking somewhere in the teens or the middle. So I. I I, I'm always about getting the best player available, and I think that they just had about six or ten pl best player availables drop before them because they just went the wrong way with that Seattle win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I said uh, right after, right as the trajectory happened, right as the Todd Bowles cover zero play happened, that <laughs> the best thing for the Arizona Cardinals would be for the Rams to win the Super Bowl because then that's when players dissipate. That's yep. when everybody leaves, goes and gets paid elsewhere because they've got to the mountaintop. And now we're starting to see the New Orleans Saints in Los Angeles as it pertains to cap space, draft capital, whatever it is, where you've got to pay the piper and there's not always the money to go around afterwards for talent, which yep. benefits the Cardinals. Now, let's pivot into key matchups for Sunday. Um, it, two different teams looking at this game very different ways. Travis, looking at it a third way, please, Cardinals, get a damn W so the Rams can move down and have a higher draft. <laughs> we'll discuss all that more as we roll on here. Crossover Thursday, Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Travis Rogers locked on Rams. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Bink Prize Picks. Uh, Prize Picks is awesome. Prize Picks is easy. All you have to do is pick two or more players and pick more of their more or less than their projected stats and place your entry. And with basketball season here, this is pretty cool. You can pick new combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league, a league created uh, specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron and Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made in receptions. It's badass. Especially if you've been on price picks for a while, you're like, Ooh, something new. Price picks always got you covered. Quick and easy withdrawals. You can use Apple Pay to deposit. Piece of cake. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Again, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Crossover Thursday, Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals, Travis Rogers locked on Rams at Travis Rogers on Twitter at Clancy's Corner for me. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Rams your first listen, respectively, each and every day, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today and on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 
streaming channel. Happy Thanksgiving. You can check out uh, Tyler Rowland of Lockdown Titans and myself doing Lockdown NFL Thursday on YouTube and on the national channel. Uh, we compared, you know what? It's a holiday. Travis, let me just really quick in a minute. Okay. We compared the top five quarterbacks yeah. to Thanksgiving dinner food. Okay? okay. So I said Patrick Mahomes is mashed potatoes because it doesn't matter. It's solid. You can rely on it and it makes everything better. Okay. It's just there. It's a constant and it doesn't have to be anything special. It's just there. I yep. said Joe Burrow was garlic mashed potatoes. It's not for everybody. It's a little spicier and it doesn't <laughs> always translate because the garlic to mashed potato ratio has to be perfect. You can't be eating a bulb of garlic and you can't be wishing there was more garlic flavor. It's got to be kind of like a perfect, a perfect ecosystem. I'm with you. Josh Allen is Turkey. Maybe he's got a better PR person than what it actually is. Maybe <laughs> Turkey's PR person is the greatest thing. And sometimes it doesn't translate. It's dry. You know, it's not always what it's cracked up to be. Lamar Jackson was gravy. It's smooth. Mm. It goes with everything. And it's just easy. <laughs> it's just easy, but there are layers to a good gravy. And Lamar Jackson has layers to his game, and he is a gazelle in open space, the most fun thing to watch as an entity in football. And then Jalen Hurts is stuffing. Okay, it takes a lot, but when it's good, it is versatile as all hell. So what do you think? I mean, you think that's I, I, I don't anything? I don't have an objection at all. <laughs> I, I was waiting for the part where you compared something to turkey because turkey look, whatever happens on Thanksgiving Thursday, the one thing that I could if you said to me you have to just erase one thing from the table, it's the turkey. I, I still need the gravy. I still need all these other things that go. The turkey's fine. It's there, but it, it can't be the star of the meal. And that is Josh Allen. Jo Josh Allen's really, really good. But what actually happens with him? Not so much. I mean, they're kind of spinning their wheels. They That 18 seconds when they lost that game uh, a few years ago to the Chiefs, yeah. that's going to haunt them forever because that yeah. was their shot and they missed it. But uh, I like it. Is if, if there's a quarterback in the league that's cranberry sauce, who's that? Oh, boy. This is what because... you get on crossover Thursday with Travis and me. I mean, I have, I have no I have no idea. I mean, can I say, what do we can have, I say 14 minutes? Purdy? Can, I, can I throw Brock Purdy in there? And here's okay. why. Because okay. as long as the potatoes, Debo, as long as the stuffing, McCaffrey, as long as the uh, gravy in Trent Williams, as long as everything else is perfect, it doesn't really matter what the cranberries are. They're fine. They're on the table, and, it, and you can eat them or not eat them, and it's not really going to affect the meal. But if all you have on your plate is cranberries, you're screwed. And yeah. that's Brock Purdy. That's true. That's a good point. I, I can appreciate that. Nice little <laughs> addendum. Nice little addendum. Anyways, back to reality here. Uh, the Rams, Rams and Cardinals, State, uh, State Farm Stadium on Sunday, 105 kickoff, I believe. Uh, for those that don't know, the Rams at four and six are one game out of the seventh playoff spot in the 2023 playoff race. Sure, we're only through 11 weeks going yep. into week 12, but the two teams that hold the wild card uh, spots right now are the Seattle Seahawks, Geno Smith. We'll see how healthy he is. And the Joshua Dobbs led Minnesota Vikings. So I said before the, or I said right when the Viking, right when the Rams got their first win, when Cooper Cup was around the corner for coming back, that like this offense is good enough to make the playoffs. And I know that you, I think that you're as much of a realist as I am about the team that you cover. And I don't know if you're too close to not realize how lucky at the best average is better than so many bad offenses in this league. Sure. And it's not even close to what it was, but you wouldn't be shocked if they won eight games and made the playoffs, right? It might only take seven. So, look, if it's eight, I think they got a shot. I, I think that nine is the number that we've been concentrating yeah. on for a while because here's what it is. They have four games left on their schedule that they have to win if, if they're going to go to the playoffs. It's Arizona, it's New Orleans, it's Washington, and it's the Giants. Okay, two of those are at home, two of those are on the road. You have to win those four games – that takes you to eight. Now you got to find one more in your last three games, which is Cleveland at SoFi Stadium. Miles Garrett may murder somebody in that game because he's going to have be able to do whatever he wants. You've got Lamar Jackson on the road in Baltimore. You're not winning there. And then you've got San Francisco in the last week of the season up in San Francisco. The Niners beat the Rams like a drum. They just the, – the, the Rams don't match up well with them. 
Now, the interesting part is the Niners may be locked into whatever playoff seed they have by that point. So maybe they don't empty the bag against the Rams and the Rams have a chance right there. So that's the path to nine. But you can't lose to the Cardinals. You can't lose to the Saints, who are okay. You can't lose to the Commanders, who are okay. And you can't lose to the Giants, who are terrible. So the Rams have not won two games in a row all season long. So to ask them to run the table against anybody is a big ask. And to your point about the offense, the, the Rams are averaging 19 and a half points a game. They don't score. The, 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 re, the reason the Rams are in these games is because the defense is pretty darn good. You don't know. No, nobody knows any of the names outside of Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald, you know, and maybe Ernest Jones, but the days of Bobby Wagner and Jalen Ramsey and, 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 and Greg Gaines and Ashawn Robinson. And these guys, those guys are all gone. This is a no name defense. It is Aaron Donald and a bunch of guys that nobody really pays attention to. They're winning games by scoring 17 points. They're winning games in the high teens and low twenties. Their offense really has not been very dynamic at all this year. They've scored 30 points once all year long. If they're going to win, it's going to be on that defense and making just enough plays like they did against Seattle. They, they made like three or four plays that were good enough, but that was as much of a drew lock, not being able to get anything done as it was the yeah. Rams actually being able to move the ball. Yeah. And I think for the key matchups and we'll, we're spilling over a little bit here due to our Thanksgiving little in, in, innuendo there. Um, we'll, we'll finish this on the other side here, but I think a lot of this is just Kyler Murray versus the interior of the offensive line. I mean, I think that's, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, Aaron Donald versus the interior of the offensive line for the Cardinals. The left side has been atrocious this year. DJ Humphreys is really, you know, it's, it's sad. It's like, it's like watching, you know, it's just like watching a family member just, just getting a little bit older, just losing that first step where it's like, yeah. Damn it. Tapping. He's meant so much to this organization. He's meant so much to the locker room. He's meant he's one of the best interviews in football. He's a sweet man who is starting to lose a step. And it just sucks. You know, yeah. and he's been he's one of Steve Kimes' best draft picks. He never demanded uh all of this money. He he signed the right contracts for the team, and it's just the left side has been been very difficult to watch. And Aaron Donald, I mean, his favorite side is not is not not that side. So right. it's going to be problematic for the Cardinals on Sunday, as it always is. Why it always begs the question: Why why did the Arizona Cardinals not take Tyler Linderbaum yeah. instead of training for Marquise Brown? Why are the, like why is Tristan Worf on the left side? These are things that are constantly just like you, you know, s- cycling like a hamster wheel in the back of all of our heads as we witness the Cardinals, you know, still struggling on the offensive line. Oh, Let's yeah. pivot this really quick. Um, we'll, we'll go into the next segment. We'll talk about a couple more, uh, you know, matchups and, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Alex desserts? Clancy locked on Cardinals. Huh? We're going to talk desserts on the other side. I figure if we I had mean, to listen, talk to the main courses and should get into the desserts. It's going to be very quick. Okay. <laughs> and it ain't pumpkin pie. That's how you bury no, the lead. Alex Clancy, Travis starts. Rogers. <laughs> Crossover Thursday. We'll hit desserts and pat the victory <laughs> next. <laughs> All right, final segment, Crossover Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Hope you're enjoying time with your family. And if you're not, that's another, like, the beautiful thing about what happened a few years ago. One of the very few is that we're connected now more than ever through Zoom and FaceTime and all that stuff. When it used to be weird, it's not weird anymore. I remember, like, there were a couple times where I was at home during the holidays, and now I'm just throwing up Zoom and eating dinner with my family. Like, if you're not with your family, if you are, hope everybody's enjoying their holiday season, the beginning of it. I will not listen to Mariah Carey this year. I won't do it. We're getting closer. She's unwrapping herself, and it's right around the corner, and I won't do it. I won't do it, Travis Rogers. I'll walk on Rams. Um, so really quick, let's let's just sew up this game here. The matchups, like for the Cardinals, it's Aaron Donald versus the interior of the offensive line, and it's the cornerback room that has been getting absolutely roasted. Marco Wilson has given up over 100 yards more than the next closest cornerback. It's not his fault. He's never meant to be a CB1. Garrett Williams is giving up a 58 passer rating, a, a rookie out of rookie out of Syracuse. You know, that's a guy that this is five games in now. And he is playing. I can't remember who the last young court, like Marshawn Lattimore. Excuse okay. me. Um, well, obviously Patrick Sertan is rookie year. He's kind of taking a step back this year, but there are guys and he hasn't done it with that kind of splash. And obviously Jalen Ramsey years ago and things like that, but he hasn't shown that the game is too fast for him. And that's one of the things that I, that I preach is like, if it's not an, Oh no, right away, that's good. And it's like, Oh wow. Right away. It's harder. It's harder to not replicate that than it is to replicate it 
And I think that that's something the Cardinals may have a winner with their third round pick out of Syracuse. Yeah, it's funny you you mentioned that, Alex, because I think one of the things that's interesting to me going to this game is Darian Kendrick is a guy that I thought was this close to getting benched and, and this close to maybe becoming almost exclusively a special teams guy or, or a depth piece. Rams started him last week against Seattle, and when they announced him, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're going to try it one more. He was really good. And, and, and all of a sudden – they have a little bit of help on that second level of the defense that really was not there before. Akella Weatherspoon has followed the the path that he has had basically throughout his entire NFL career, which is for about five or six weeks, he's really good. And then after that, not so much. And that's yeah. when we talked to the locked on Steelers guy uh, early in the season, he's like, yeah, just wait. And because I, I know what you're thinking right now, but just wait, he was right. And so, they need to have a little bit of help on the on that third level of the Rams defense. And Darian Kendrick finally looked to be that guy that you're talking about because when they drafted him out of Georgia, it was one of these, okay, he's played in a lot of big games. He's played against a lot of NFL players, but it did look a little quick and a little fast for him his first couple of, uh, you know, his first year in the season, or I should say his first year in the league. And then this year, it really did not look good through the first half of the season. They come back out of the bye and it looked a lot better. So I'm very excited to see how he looks on Sunday. Yeah, you know, this is the time of the year where, and I know it's something that, you know, the rational mind taking fandom out of it and everything's like, you don't want your team to be average. You want it to be great or bad, you know, kind right. of a thing where no, it's like, no question. You know, yeah. So with this, like, I can see why you're teetering on the, I call it the existential crisis fence where it's like, you know, I always say Cardinals win, go win games because it shows that you have more, than you thought you did under the hood at this point. Uh -huh. But that's with, you know, that's in a vacuum of, you're not supposed to win this year. The Rams right. were kind of teetering on the fence. They didn't know about Cooper Cup. Didn't know if Matthew Stafford was ever going to be able to play football again. Like, there were so many different storylines because this is like, you know, I mean, this is like adolescence versus, you know, midlife crisis. Right. Which were, which were the Cardinals and the Rams are respectively. So, you know, storylines with the Cardinals is like, and and I've never taken this stance before. And, and I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's necessarily irrational. It's like growth here is not predicated directly upon win loss record. Right. And I think that it's, and I, I think it's freeing. Like you can have young guys like Paris Johnson Jr. Hasn't missed a snap this year. Has he been great? No, but is he worth the sixth, sixth overall pick? Sure. Damn looks like it. You yep. know, B.J. Ojolari is now coming into zone. These guys can play meaningful snaps with zero pressure. All young players had to experience after being drafted by Steve Kime over the last handful of years was pressure to perform because he couldn't build a roster. Namely, yep. Marco Wilson, who got drafted in the fourth round. They didn't bring any sort of CB1 in, so he was thrust into playing CB2 as a rookie when he didn't ever have that, you know, skill level. And now these guys can just play. And that's why this is some of the most fun football I've ever watched since covering this team since being a radio for 12 years, because it's a free pass for a year just to see what you got. Yeah. And it's it, like, you know, it, it, there's freedom in that. It, there is. And, and it, it's funny to hear you say that because I think that's what the Rams are doing without telling anybody that they, 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 they're, they have talked to me. We're going to try to compete. We're going to try to go to the playoffs. We're going to try to be the best that we can. It's, they're saying all the right things. And and I'll give Sean McVay credit for this, and I'll give every player on that roster credit for this. They play hard. They, they, yeah. they, they compete, and they play hard. And so I give them all the credit in the world for that. But they let a lot of talent leave, and they brought in this much. They, they, this was one of these, don't listen to what they say, watch what they do. And what they did was Jalen Ramsey, gone. Greg Gaines, gone. Ashawn Robinson, gone. Bobby Wagner, gone. Allen Robinson, gone. Like all of these guys are here. They drafted a, a, a new left guard in Steve Avila. They caught a couple of defensive players in Byron Young and Kobe Turner and some other guys. And this was basically a, you know, let's see what happens. They traded away what, what minor assets they might have had in Cam Akers and Van Jefferson. They both got rid of them. Nothing came back at the trade deadline. I know that they signed Carson Wentz a couple of weeks ago, but you know he was available to anybody that wanted him. This is a let's see what we have. If we stumble into something, cool, mm -hmm. let's go for it. But this was not a, hey, we got to really hit the gas here. They found Puka Nakua. They found Byron Young. They found some guys along the way. Avila is a pro. He's going to be at that spot for a very long time.
but they didn't spend a nickel more than they had to for the first time in forever. Real, really, since the first time since they took Jared Goff number one overall in 2016, they have a first round draft pick next year. They got 75 million in dead money coming off the cap next year. They have a chance to finally actually dig in on this. And this was one of those. Oh no, we're going to try. Well, what did you do? Well, nothing. Yeah. It, it's so I, I, I'm with you. I think that what the what the Cardinals are going through is a little bit more um, obvious and a little bit more. Hey, this is what we're doing. And the Rams are slow playing this a little bit as far as what they say, but what they do. And, and Sean McVay is a good coach. They have a really, really good NFL quarterback in Matthew Stafford. They have a game wrecker in Aaron Donald. So they're always going to kind of be in it, but I don't think they're going for it. And if you can split that hair, I think that's where they are right now. Yeah, it's interesting. It's exciting and scary because now there is actual weight in the first round like there hasn't been in yep. the last decade pretty much, which is it's just fascinating, you know. And the Cardinals are just sitting pretty like they're going to have two top 20 most likely picks unless the Houston Texans go win the Super Bowl or, you know, whatever they're on the trajectory to go <laughs> doing right now. Yeah, I mean, every Arizona Cardinals fan needs to be a Jacksonville Jaguar fan on Sunday because <laughs> if Jacksonville loses to Houston – Houston then takes over the AMC South lead and they have the tiebreaker over Jacksonville. Yep. Because they've already beaten them twice. Twice. So yeah. this is something where it's getting high, more and more high stakes. I've removed myself from the outcome after seeing <laughs> CJ Stroud come back, throw the worst interception I've ever seen for a pick six against Cincinnati, and then yeah. marching down 45 seconds later to win the game. Like he was bored and he needed something to do. So he gave up the lead just to go take it back again. Let me ask you this, and we were talking about this on on Locked On earlier this week. The everydayers from the Locked On Rams will know this. Let's say C.J. Stroud and the Texans win the AFC South. Let's say they finish the season ten and seven. Okay, good, not great. Say Lamar Jackson backs up just a little bit. One hundred percent, he's the MVP. One hundred percent. That's where yeah. that's where I'm headed. Like, yeah. never mind rookie of the year. Is he the damn MVP of the league? Yeah. If Hurts, Mahomes, and Jackson all back up just a little bit, it's Stroud, right? Because none of them have played great. Right. You know, like none of them have played great. And Lamar, like, this is the time of year, and I really hope it doesn't happen because he's so good for the NFL. This is the time of year where there may be a hobble, where there may – and I really – again, I you don't wish anybody – you don't want to wish anybody to get hurt. But play 17 games, and then I'll believe that you can play 17 games. I hope he can because yeah. I, I want him to win again. I don't Me think too. Jalen Hurts is playing incredibly well. You know, A.J. Brown, like, he's had flashes. Like, he's had the highest peaks out of anybody. Jalen Hurts has. But I'll tell you what, and, like, listen, I, I don't know. Brock Purdy should be getting one vote. Like, I don't think he should win it. I don't. Yeah. I don't. But if they didn't lose those three games, say they lost one, and they were a two-loss team right now, he should be in the conversation. Like, his numbers, I, and I know that he he plays at a – like, it, it's mad and uneasy with what he's got compared. But, right. I mean – it doesn't like it's not like Jalen Hurts doesn't have weapons and doesn't have a great no. defense. No, P Purdy's Purdy's fine as long as the rest of it is really good. Like yeah. we we saw what it looks like when hey, can you give me a little bit more? Nope. And 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 that's fine. Like there there's not a lot of guys that can the 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 guys that if you say to you know the 32 teams in the league, hey, can your quarterback just take care of this by himself today or, or relatively by himself? There may be seven or eight teams that's like, yeah, my guy can do it. Purdy's not mm -hmm. one of those guys. That's not an insult to him, right. but the MVP should be in that group. And, yeah. and that's why and that's why Lamar Jackson and that's why Stroud and Mahomes and Hurts, those guys, you just say, hey, listen, I just need you to go out there and and wreck the game. Just go out there and ball mm -hmm. out. Guys like that. And quite frankly, that's why the Rams have won four games. It's because Stafford's that good, too. He's not an MVP candidate. That's not yeah. what I'm getting at. But right. he, he also can do – ish that very few guys in the league can do he can make throws and he has to because without those crazy throws they're they're in hot water yep cj stroud uh it'd be fascinating um and you know well deserved even though you know christian mccaffrey going back to the 49ers and we have 14 seconds before i get you know fired here from ross jackson is <laughs> CJ, christian mccaffrey seems to be the guy, the, the motor. And when he's healthy, he's best pound for pound. Alex Clancy, yep. Travis Rogers, we'll see you on a respective podcast tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving.